for the love, uh, it is still on go. Okay, recording now. For this uh, module three, we are already on electrolysis. So we are halfway of the semester already. So for those of you who still have problems with your internet connection, kindly fix that one because we are halfway of the semester. And honestly, we haven't um, looked into your grades yet. Okay, because it's 300 versus 1. So uh, just kindly be patient and waiting for your grades, the result of your prelim as well as your midterm grades. Okay, so without further ado, let's now proceed to redox reactions. Okay, redox reactions, this is the subtopic for electrolysis. Okay, so when we say redox, it comes from the two words reduction and oxidation. So for these reactions, oxidation happens as well as reduction in only one chemical reaction. So when we say oxidation, this is the gain of oxygen while the loss of electrons. So there will be an increase in oxidation number. Later, we will have examples for that. And for the reduction, there will be loss of oxygen but gain of electrons and there is the decrease in oxidation number. Okay? So when we say oxidation number, those are the numbers that are written at the top of your, of your cation or anion. So let's have this as our example. We have magnesium and we also have oxygen. Now, when magnesium and oxygen will react with each other, it will form magnesium oxide. Okay? So here, magnesium is an element. Oxygen here is another element. While magnesium oxide is a compound. Okay? Now, when we say element, they have their stable um, state already, okay? So for elements having stable states, the oxidation number is zero, okay? So take note of that. For all elements, they are in their stable state, so the oxidation number is zero. Now for oxygen, this is another element, okay? The oxidation number is also zero. However, magnesium oxide is already a compound. It is composed of magnesium ion as well as oxide ion. Now, if you take a look at your periodic table, magnesium ion has the valence number positive 2 or 2 plus. It belongs to group number 2. Okay, so how are you going to determine the oxidation number is through the group number, okay? Group number one electrons have the oxidation state of positive one. All group two elements have the oxidation state of positive two. All group three, positive three. Group four, plus or minus four. Group five elements it already have an oxidation state of negative 3, group 6, negative 2, and group 7, negative 1. For group 8, 0. Group 8 are the noble gases. And noble gases are stable elements. So they have 0 oxidation number. Okay? So starting from your left of your periodic table, Group 1, group 2, group 3, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. When we go to or reach group 4, it is already plus and minus 4. And from group 8, it is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay? So, magnesium again is in group 2 of your periodic table. The oxidation number is positive 2. Now, oxygen is in group 6 
of your periodic table, so the oxidation number is negative 2. Okay. So, we have magnesium. It is a cation. Positive 2 oxidation number. Oxygen and ion. Negative 2 oxidation number. Now, as a reactant here, magnesium again, it's stable. It is an element. So, having 0 oxidation number. And when it became product, it becomes magnesium 2 plus the cation. So, there is an increase in oxidation number from 0 to 2. On the other hand, we have oxygen. Oxygen here on our left side of our reaction, it has 0 oxidation number. Why? Because again, oxygen is an element. It is stable. However, in the right side of the reaction, oxygen here is an anion. So having the negative 2 oxidation number so from zero to negative two there is a decrease in oxidation number so from our definition of redox reaction when there is an increase in oxidation number magnesium here is oxidized okay so if we are going to take a look at our definition for oxidation, there is a gain of oxygen, loss of electrons, and increase in oxidation number. Okay? So, magnesium here loses two electrons. While in the other reaction, oxygen gains two electrons. So, and the decrease in oxidation number is the reduction. So, magnesium undergoes oxidation oxygen undergoes reduction for this example. Okay, so another example is this. Copper plus silver nitrate that will yield copper nitrate and silver. This one, copper is an element. So this has zero oxidation number. While silver nitrate is a compound, silver here, has the oxidation number of positive 1, and nitrate has an oxidation number of negative 1. Okay? So, if you are going to take a look at polyatomic ions at the bottom of your periodic table, you will see the, there the list of polyatomic ions. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion. And the oxidation numbers are also there. Okay? The products are copper nitrate. Copper has an oxidation number of 2 plus, while nitrate again is negative 1. And silver here, it stands alone already. It is an element, therefore, it has an oxidation state of 0. Okay? So, copper here having 0 oxidation number, while copper here already has the oxidation number of 2 plus. So, there is an increase in oxidation number from 0 to 2. So, copper undergoes oxidation. On the other hand, silver has an oxidation number of positive 1 in this compound. While silver here has an oxidation state of 0 because, again, it is already an element. So, from positive 1 to 0 there is the decrease in oxidation number, so silver undergoes reduction. So in this equation, or in this chemical equation, this undergoes redox um, reaction, having both reduction and oxidation reaction. Okay, so uh, I haven't told you to have your pen and paper with you, but I guess you have them ready. Um, I think I have an exercise here. Awala. Okay, so this will just be your practice exercises at home. Okay, I'll just give you this example and how to get the oxidation numbers. Okay? So, say for example, you have 
uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon is in group 4, okay? So it can have positive 4 or negative 4. Oxygen is in group 6, so negative 2. So if for oxygen, you have negative 2 oxidation number and there are 2 oxygen atoms, so multiply that. Negative 2 times 2, that will be equal to negative 4. So that means that the oxidation state of carbon is positive 4. Positive 4 minus 4, that will be equal to 0. The oxidation state of a compound must be equal to 0. But the individual oxidation states of the elements in that compound is not equal to 0. Another example, we have magnesium chloride. Okay? So, from your periodic table, chlorine is in group 7. And group 7 elements have the oxidation state of negative 1. So, negative 1, multiply it by 2. That means you have negative 2. So, to make the oxidation state of magnesium chloride equal to 0, magnesium should have the oxidation number of positive 2. Positive 2 minus 2 that is equal to zero. Is it understood? Okay. So I will just ask someone, Justin. Ah, uh, no. Si Justin naman to naglead of prayer ganina. No. Ah, uh, Mary. Let's have Mary to explain why is the oxidation number of nitrogen negative three in this compound. Mary Alagase, are you with us? Wala si Mary. Okay. How about Kring Kring? Galatea. Wala po si Kring Kring. Okay, who else are here with us this morning? Mr. No, I'm I still have trouble understanding. I should get dry, Justin. Uh, so, since um, hydrogen is in uh, the mm -hmm. first column, is so it's the one so the next thing to look about which is positive three the nitrogen is in group five uh so it's plus negative okay. three so that's why negative three on oxidation i am oxidation number or mm -hmm. that's why negative three so to make it zero okay All right, so that is very good question. Okay, according to Justin, mm -hmm. according to Justin, hydrogen has the oxidation state of positive one. All right, so positive one times three, hydrogen has positive three. And nitrogen, in order to make it zero, equal to zero, nitrogen must have negative three. Okay, thank you very much, Justin. Okay, so um, let's have this. For sulfate ion, the oxidation state for the whole polyatomic ion is negative 2. So it is not equal to 0. Okay, so here, oxygen has 4 atoms and oxygen has negative 2 oxidation number. So, negative 2 times 4, that is equal to negative 8. Now, in order for the polyatomic ion to have negative 2 oxidation state, what will be the oxidation number for sulfur if oxygen has negative 8? Okay? So, neg negative 8, to be equal this to be negative 2, sulfur must have positive 6. 
plus 6 minus 8 is negative 2. Is that understood? Okay. Who among you is confused? Kindly turn your mic on and speak. Ako, miss. Okay. Jan Paul, what is your question regarding this? About good sa everything, miss. Dilikin ako masaptan pa kayo, good. Okay. So, for this, so faith. Okay, so you just have to assign the oxidation number for each element, okay? And the oxidation number, again, is or can be determined by the group number of the element, okay, in the periodic table. So, again, group 1 elements have oxidation number positive 1. Group 2, positive 2. Group 3, positive 3. And when you jump to group 4 elements, group 4 elements can have positive 4 or negative 4. And for the group 5 elements, okay, um, you may write this down. For the group 5 elements, negative 3. Group 6, negative 2. Group 7, negative 1. And all the noble gases in group 8 having 0. Okay, no oxidation number or, or zero oxidation number for group 8 elements. Okay, so that is the basic. All right, now when, when we go to compounds, it will be case to case for this. And we are going to to first determine the oxidation state of that element that you are sure of the oxidation number based from the periodic table. Okay. So, let us go back to ammonia. Let us go back to ammonia. Ammonia, this is a compound. So, for the whole compound, the oxidation state is zero or oxidation number. Now, from your periodic table, hydrogen is in group one and hydrogen all group one elements have positive one oxidation number so since this has positive one oxidation number multiply this with the number of atoms that are there okay so here in this chemical compound there are three hydrogen so positive one times three so you have positive 3 to be the oxidation number for hydrogen. Now, to make it equal to 0, what would be nitrogen? So, this must be negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3, that is equal to 0. Okay, is that understood already? Everybody, you may turn your mic and speak. Okay, wala. So, ang silence means yes. Okay. Now, if let, let us go to this. Sulfate. This is a polyatomic ion. And the whole ion has negative 2 oxidation state. Okay. Now, we already know oxygen. It is in group 6. It has negative 2 oxidation number so negative 2 times 4 that is equal to negative 8 now how are we going to have sulfur what will be the oxidation number for sulfur if this is negative 8 to have the whole thing to be negative 2 so sulfur must be positive 6 okay because positive 6 minus 8 is equal to negative 2. Okay, is that understood already? Sulfur has positive 6 oxidation number. Oxygen has negative 2 oxidation number. Alright? So, are there questions? Who else is confused? 
with the oxidation number. I miss na no ang isa miss kay nag aim for zero then ang kani kay negative two na. Dili siya apply to all na zero ang pangita. For oxygen? Like katong... Ah, for, for this, for the whole polyatomic ion. This oh. is negative two. Uh, so so nag-design... Ang question... Like this one, ammonia, the whole thing is zero. Because this is not an ion. This is a compound. Mm. Mm -mm. For compounds, the oxidation state is zero. Just like the element. Okay? But here, this is already a polyatomic ion. So when we say polyatomic ion, there are one... Or there are two or more I, uh, atoms in an ion. Okay? And the list of polyatomic ions is in the bottom of your periodic table. Alright? Yes, miss. Yes, na? Okay. So... Another example, ammonium ion. This is a polyatomic ion. Okay? So, hydrogen again has plus 1, plus 1 times 4, positive 4. Okay? So, in order for this whole ion to be positive 1, the charge will be positive 1, what will be nitrogen? Okay? So, hydrogen is plus 4. Nitrogen must be negative 3. Minus 3 plus 4 is equal to positive 1. Okay, how about that? Is that understood? Ammonium ion. Everybody? Kajina? Okay, silence means yes. So... We have our exercises on your module. Okay, so I guess you haven't opened the module yet. Okay, so exercises are there and the readings for this discussion are also there. Okay, so we have now electrochemical cells as the application for redox reaction. Okay, so when we say electrochemical Electrochemical cells, these are also known as galvanic or voltaic cells. Okay? Chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Okay? So, we already learned that um, certain chemicals are electrolytes. So, when we say electrolytes, they can conduct electricity. Okay? So, this is a spontaneous redox reaction that is used to generate a voltage. You separate the reactants and force the electrons to travel through a wire. Okay? So let us have this as an example of our electrochemical cell. Okay? Here, in this um, beaker, say for example, this is a beaker, you have copper sulfate solution. On the other beaker, you have zinc sulfate solution. Copper sulfate and zinc sulfate are chemicals that are said to be electrolytes. So what are electrolytes again? These are substances that can conduct electricity. Okay. Now here, on our copper sulfate solution, we have our copper as our electrode and here in the or we have metal electrodes rather okay so metals conduct electricity okay and this is being or the two metals are being connected with a wire okay now we have our salt bridge okay the salt bridge we use sodium chloride. 
the soft bridge will be the one to balance out the flow of the electrons. Okay. So here, the copper ions, the copper and the sulfate will separate. Copper and sulfate ions will separate in the solution. And the copper 2 positive will go here to the metal or will be attracted to the metal. Okay? Well, the sulfate ion will just stay here. Now, on the other container or the other beaker, <clears throat> the zinc sulfate will separate into ions or we call that they will ionize. And the zinc 2 plus will go here to the metal or will be um, attracted to the metal. So with this, from zinc 2 plus, it becomes zinc already. Okay? And from copper 2 plus, it becomes copper. And the flow of electrons will be from this side, the zinc side, to the copper side. So when there is a flow of electrons, that means there is already electricity. Okay? So in the anode, okay, in the anode, the electrode, this is the electrode where oxidation occurs. In the cathode, reduction occurs. Okay? And the salt bridge, as what I had said, it balances the charge. This prevents buildup of ions on one side of the cell. Okay? And if the anode disappears, Years, that means that no electricity will flow. Okay. So with, this, so with this, this is now our cathode where reduction occurs. And this is now our anode where oxidation occurs. Okay. Oxidation, again, there is an increase in oxidation number. While reduction, there is the decrease in oxidation number. Okay. Cell diagrams represent the redox reactions for electrochemical cells. In the anode, we have this. We have zinc to zinc 2 plus. Okay. In the cathode, we have copper 2 plus to copper. Okay. So again, what occurs in the cathode? In the cathode, reduction occurs. So, from 2 plus to 0, there is a decrease in oxidation number. In the anode, oxidation occurs from 0 to 2 plus, there is an increase in oxidation number. Alright. So, for this, there is what we call as the cell potential. Well, we say cell potential, that is the energy that the chemical reaction stores. The chemical potential energy that is stored, which can be converted into electrical energy. Okay? So, it is being, or it has the unit column, okay, or volt, okay, or rather volt. It is volt, sorry, okay. And it is equal to joule per column. Column is a unit of charge. Okay? So, here, we have our example. Okay? So, these are our reference tables. Okay? Uh, kindly take a photo or a screenshot of these standard reduction potentials because you will be using this. And I guess, in the module, these are also being enumerated there or the table has been attached there. Okay? So, these are the standard potentials. Okay? So, for this half reaction, we have positive 2.866 volts. Okay? And for this half reaction, we have positive 2.075 volts. Okay? For hydrogen... It is equal to zero. This is our reference. Okay? And we have this part here to be having negative signs of our electropotential. Okay? 
So the strongest oxidizing agents are the ones that are easily reduced and the strongest reducing agents are the ones that are easily oxidized. Okay? So here are the rules enumerated on how to compute for the electropotential. Okay? And this is in your module. Okay? So you don't need to have a copy of this PPT. It's already there written on your module. Let us directly go to our example. Okay. How are we going to determine the electropotential? Okay. Say, for example, we have iodine and we have bromine. From the table, iodine, when it is being reduced, having the electropotential energy of 0 0.53 volts. While bromine, when it is also reduced, okay, sorry, locking negative sign here. When this is also reduced, it has 1.07 volts of electropotential energy. Wait, sa ha? Kwasang e kon. Super script. Okay. Now, if this have reaction, okay, so you are asked here, what will be the overall reaction and the electropotential cell total if bromine is added to a solution containing iodine at 25 degrees Celsius? Assume all species are in their standard states. So when we say that, we are going to use the table that was shown earlier. Okay. Now, bromine here. will go oxidation while iodine will go or undergo reduction. Okay, so using the standard reduction potentials, the fact that bromine has the more positive potential indicates that bromine will be reduced. So change the sign of the oxidation reaction and reverse it so that it is written as an oxidation. Okay, bromine is reduced. Therefore, iodine must be oxidized. And in order for the iodine to be oxidized, from our, from our table, okay, this is the value for iodine. It is positive 0 0.53, but you flip the reaction. In flipping the reaction, the sign changes. Okay? So here... Iodine has the sign negative 0 0.53 already. Okay? So it's just like the delta H that we had, okay, or enthalpy that we had in the previous modules. Okay? You flip the chemical reaction, you change the sign of the electropotential energy. So if you add the reaction, this one also the values here add up so 1.07 minus 0 0.53 the total electropotential energy is positive 0 0.54 volts okay and how do you get this how do you get this constant values it's from our table all right okay and the exercises are also given and the reactions will be given as well as the electro potential. Okay. So, are there questions? I cannot see some of your faces. I cannot see your reactions. Okay, anyone can speak? Hola. Okay. Now, how about this? We have zinc and we have copper. Zinc 2 plus 
copper and a 1M solution of Cu2 plus are reacted. Okay, let us go to our table. If we have zinc and if we have copper, Okay, we don't have zinc. We cannot answer that one. We only have copper. Well, I zinc. So we cannot answer that one. Okay, so if it is not in your table, okay, some will just be written or comes along with the problem. And the others, you can just um, take a look at the references given at the last part of the module because it's all there okay and more examples are also in your module okay are there questions you may turn your mic on and speak everybody no questions Later na, miss. Pag nag-answer na, miss. Dito na manggawas ang mga questions. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if you have any concern. Uh, by the way, for your modules and for the lab reports, just kindly have all your answers in one document only. Okay. Again, my apologies for not including dot doc .docx in one of the of the submissions okay so from now on you may you may submit as dot doc x or dot doc or dot pdf for your submission so one module one submissions only have it in one word document or in one pdf file document okay or pdf by whatever you call that pages all your answers should be in one avenue only, okay? And for those who inbox me their answers, rest assured, I am getting all of those. I just don't reply each one of you um, because dalhan mo, 300, okay? So 300 in my inboxes, 300 to download. So murag ko anajud kayo. So, thank you very much for taking time this morning for our TDOA. We will not meet for a laboratory anymore. Um, I will be posting Laboratory 6 when it is done. And I will just um, extend the due date for Laboratory 6. Okay, And stay tuned for the announcement on when you're going to have your midterm exam. Thank you very much for coming to class this morning. Miss, we now leave. Na koy, na koy question, miss. About sa koan, miss ba? Sa, ato enrich part sa koan after sa laboratory. Kato enrich portion. Apelang patupat, miss. Even though laboratory lagi gipangayo. <laughs>